Ah, oh, basta mamaya ako nagagawin, kakain muna ako. Oh. oh my God, I have so many things to do. I'm so stressed. Nakapalo. Ah. Wala, ano ba yan? Ang dami ko na naman gagawin. Tambak na naman. Nakakatamad naman yan. Gagawin ko na nga. Bye, ma'am. Thank you po. Tapusin ko itong isang episode tapos gagawa na talaga. Eh, eh abi na pala. O, tingin-tingin mo dyan. Gusto mo? Lo? Masa ka? Eh, ang toothbrush ka nga. Bravo, kill this trash! Papasok mo si ma'am. Iwan ang triba ngayon. Lapo-lapo na naman. Ah, kairita. Sino ang isda dyan? Ah, wala. Ma'am, mahina ang internet ko. Gagaw ko po sa internet yung kapatid ko. Po, totoo nga po. Po, salamat ma'am sa... Good day! Today, we will be discussing the commodity system analysis of grouper fish, or as we all know it, Lapu-Lapu. Here are the authors. I'm Luisa Andrea D. Basangan, and today I will be discussing the overview and the input sector. So, what is grouper or Lapu-Lapu? From the family Ceranidae, Epiniflinae, the scientific name of grouper, is a protogenous hermaphrodite found in tropic or subtropic areas of the ocean. We have the places of or country of origin that is the United States of America, where there is the Gulf of Mexico, the South Atlantic, and the Caribbean. For Asia, we all know Vietnam, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. And of course, for Europe, the grouper fish is famous in the Mediterranean Sea. For the socioeconomic importance of the commodity, grouper fish has a high potential for contributing to the economic development of different countries. Since 2006, Trade for Lapu-Lapu expanded whether for aquaculture or seafood restaurants. Since the demand for grouper fish increased, the livelihood of fisher folks will likely be improved, creating income. Moving on to the input sector. For this, we will start with major inputs that are the seeds or fingerlings. The majority of grouper seeds are obtained from the wild with some produced in hatcheries. For the feeds, which are usually trashy fish, are the main source of food and nutrient of, groupers, of groupers until the marketable stage. Next, we have the varieties of the species. There are five genera with 40 species commercially cultured for consumption. The site requirement must be unpolluted and calm waters with a maximum water depth of 5 meters. There are certain specific requirements for this, such as salinity, temperature between 26 to 32 degrees Celsius, and a pH level of 7 to 9 are slightly alkaline. There are also precautions in the cage requirements, which are the dimensions that has to be manageable and economical in size, shape that is preferred to be square or rectangular, but it does not affect mobility and growth, so it can be circular, and the frame, which is made out of um, wood, bamboo that can withstand wind, and increasing weight of the fish. In addition to this, we have catwalks, sinkers, floaters, and shelter that fully assemble the cage with their individual functions. For the cage netting, we, different, we have different sizes based on the growing stage of the commodity. Moving on, the volume of utilization and price of inputs, we have feed consumption and price. For feed consumption, there is the feed frequency of twice a day at 10% of the grouper's body weight. The inputs, which are seeds, feeds, net cages, and bamboo, are mostly locally bought. Lastly, for the input sector, we have the sources of inputs collected by small-scale fishermen from the wild and are being sold to dealers or operators. And now for the farm sector, this will include production trends, volume, and prices, farming systems, or cultural management practices, and technological developments. Groupers being cultured in floating nets or earthen ponds cage culture is more common in Southeast Asia. According to SIFDEC, for many years the Philippines has been practicing a culture of groupers in ponds and floating net cages. The boom and bust cycle of grouper aquaculture in the Philippines was due to unsustainable cultural practices like dependence on wild-caught seeds, 
use of high stocking densities and unregulated expansion and proliferation of fish agent. In 1979, the Penghu Station of the Taiwan Fisheries Research Institute started artificial prop propagation by using hormone-inducing techniques. Echoides is one of the two major cultured groupers in Taiwan, said the FOA. The National Mariculture Center of Bahrain has conducted mass reproduction trials of this species since 1992. Grouper pan production is becoming a, an attractive alternative to intensive shrimp culture in countries where management problems have forced growers to abandon shrimp farming. This species has been tested in several countries as a, as a potential species for mariculture. According to BFAR, in 2018, the volume of grouper production was registered at 17.80 thousand metric tons. It went up by 1.81% from the previous year's output of 17.48 thousand metric tons. Fluctuations in grouper production were observed in the past three years. From a 2.23% decline in 2017, the output trend recovered in 2018 with a 1.81% increase. These are the top producing regions, ARMM, Mimaropa, Zamboanga Peninsula, and the Eastern Visayas. Here are the prices listed by the B for, for the year 2017. Production cycle includes seed and hatchery, natural spawning, management of eggs and newly hatched larvae, larval rearing, nursery, which can be outdoor and indoor system. On growing techniques can be on earthen pond systems or floating net cages system. The feed supply or the fish meal diet and the harvesting techniques. And for the technological developments, in order to increase the volume of production, new and suitable equipment for fingerling collection are needed with proper aeration and wa proper water management. And as for the sex reversal, induction of sex reversal through hormone therapy is also considered vital in culturing grouper, especially in species that are protogynous hermaphrodite that takes too long to become a male. Hi, I'm Grisha, and I will discuss the next sector of our commodity, which is the processing sector. First, the product lines. Because groupers are mostly sold as live fish, processed products of groupers just fall in one category, which is the frozen grouper. In the market, frozen grouper only varies in cuts. Frozen grouper are sold as whole fish, head and gutted, where head and guts are removed dress where not only head and guts are removed but also fins and scales and in some cases head and tails are also removed while fillets and figures are mostly cut of fish meat that was separated from its bone on the other side live fish undergoes another process presented here the post-harvest process of grouper based on the study of grouper and brackish water by southeast asian fisheries and development center aquaculture department after groupers are harvested, it is put in aerated condition tank for about an hour, adjusting its temperature about 18 degrees Celsius before putting groupers in double sheeted plastic bags. These plastic bags have enough water inside that cover the nostrils of grouper to keep them alive. Then, these plastic bags containing groupers are now placed inside of a square styrofoam box filled with crushed ice on top. Ice is added to control the rise of temperature to lower the metabolism of groupers, but ice should be contained in a plastic bag to avoid dilution when it melts. Now we're done with the product lines, we will go next to the manufacturers and scale operators of grouper. Unfortunately, there are no specific companies in the country that solely produce and culture grouper. The only source of groupers in the country is the local fishermen and dealers with the help of the associations such as the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources and Cooperative across the country. Lastly, we will tackle the volume and value of grouper production. 
As seen in the table, the volume of wool per production increases from 2017 to 2018. Based on the calculation of beef fire, production went up by 1.81%. Many regions in the country had an improvement in group production, but high production was noted in some regions. These are, these are Ilocos region with 70.41%, Central Luzon with 60.54%, Calabarzon with 23.89%, and Mimaropa region compromising 21.76%. And even though production only increases by more than 1%, the value of grouper production doubled after one year. This might be because the current prices of live groupers are at least as high for the dead fish. It is also reported the prices differ according to their sizes, species, color, and marketing arrangement. Good day everyone, I am John Cedric Zara and will be reporting about the marketing sector in the grouper industry in the Philippines. First off is the marketing channel. Fishes are collected by local fishermen which they distribute to the different marketing channel starting from the middlemen who distribute it to the local sellers such as market seller, fish shops, and hotel and restaurants. Those fishes are either consumed within the country or exported to the international market. With regards to the volume absorbed by channels, Middlemen have the highest shares of groupers since they are the ones who pick up and deliver the fishes from fishermen to local shops. Local shops have huge part in this channel since most of it are absorbed in domestic market. Lastly, international buyers have the least volume absorbed since only few groupers are left after the domestic market consume it. As of now, groupers is rarely promoted in the Philippines due to its expensive price. When it comes to cost and margin, grouper has very few costs because it is rarely promoted in the country. Transportation cost, on the other hand, is very minimal. The price of groupers varies from its subspecies. The cheapest one is the red banded grouper, which costs from 60 pesos to 200 pesos per kilo. And the most expensive one is the Malabar grouper, which costs from 320 pesos to 500 pesos per kilo. As you can see in the figure, the production of grouper does not change dramatically since 1990 to 2009. This figure shows the forecasted demand and supply of volume of fishes worldwide in 2030. And as you can see, China has the highest supply and demand worldwide, followed by Southeast Asia and Europe and Central Asia. Exportation of groupers must consider proper policy guidelines because other countries have different legalities compared to the Philippines. While on importation, we must consider food security because those products from other countries are to be consumed by the local market. So good day everyone, I am Seti and I am going to discuss the agro-services sectors that support the grouper fish industry. First, let's talk about the institutions supporting the commodity. The first one is the Development Bank of the Philippines, which finances the development of modern aquaculture projects for the production of quality grouper fingerlings. More, moreover, there are also institutions committed to supporting the grouper industry, like the Australian Center for International Agricultural Research, Queensland Department of Primary Industries, and Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research, which will fund a research project to develop improved grouper agriculture techniques within the Asia Pacific region. Moving forward, let us talk about the programs and projects that will improve the situation of the grouper industry. So with these six development programs and projects aimed at addressing the management issues and the utilizations of groupers in some of the areas where they are raised, to alleviate the poverty of fisher folks, to promote the environmental and agriculture protection, creation of sustainable livelihood for fishermen, and establish a sustainable aquaculture industry for the grouper growers. For the investment priorities, prospective investors can focus on improving the hatchery facilities and culturing groupers. Researches can be done to achieve these improvements and of course actions and fund allocations will be the key for its success. 
for the areas of concerns, government funding for research and development, and high price of the raw materials. And just like what I have said in the investment priorities, research and development can be done to solve these concerns, especially with the help of the national and local government when it comes to funding. When it comes to the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats in the different subsystems, for the input subsystem, the strength is the availability of bodies of water. For the weaknesses, or the lack of facilities and the high cost of inputs, opportunities are undemanding feed requirements and low price of feeds. And for the threats, are competition and few and small suppliers for fingerlings. For the farm production subsystem, the strengths are availability of low cost manpower in different areas in the country and favorable geography of the country. For the weaknesses, lack of production technologies and fragmented production areas. For the opportunities, alliance with small fingerling farmers for economies of scale and generating jobs. And for the threats, losses during production and too much water pollution. For the processing subsector, sub the strength is existence of few companies which process the parts of grouper for exports. For the weaknesses are lack of technology and food utilization in the country and lack of processing facilities. For the opportunities are creating varieties of process groupers and development of new factories. And for the threats are the proximity of fish farms to factories and high cost for investment. For the marketing subsector or subsystem, high value species is the strength. For the weaknesses, or lack of information with regards to the commodity and lack of existing marketing strategies about the product. For the opportunities, is a high local and international demand for groupers. And for the threats, our products have complicated requirements for transportation and marketing is not prioritized in the Philippines. For the support services subsystem, the strength is the presence of existing academic research institutions. The weaknesses or the weakness is lack of funding and research and development in the fishery sector in the in the Philippines. For the opportunities, coordination with the local and national government and other private institutions and partnerships with international institutions. And for the threats, limited equipment for improvement and corruption in the government. That's all. Thank you. As you can see on the screen, the suggested CSA framework compromises the subsystems mentioned earlier. With its different functions, certain institutions are needed in order to fully grasp the potential of the commodity grouper fish or lapu-lapu. To conclude the presentation, we have the proposed supply chain for the Philippines, which was taken from the International Institute for Sustainable Development in China. Starting from the wild harvest into the settlement of aquaculture, grouper fish must be handled with utmost care as it is prone to cannibalism and diseases. With its high value and potential, this commodity must not go to waste. And that is it for our presentation. Thank you for listening. Again, we are the Lapu Lapu students signing off. <laughs>